and be like, wow, that's really silly. Or mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, let me clarify how you dial that right now, too, because okay. essentially the way the, the features are going to work throughout the conference is you dial 9 if you want a feature, or you just dial out. So you can dial 0, 1, 1, or 1 and your number, and it'll just call whomever you're dialing. Right, 0, 1, 1, international. Yeah, if anyone's Sorry, more yeah. dialed the uh, the elevator elevator system, we could link that into Asterix. So you can talk to people in the elevators. You know, <laughs> people are getting yeah. stuck in them, so you will get the chance. Yeah, to don't talk we? To uh, yeah, don't we still have a bunch of old elevators from New York? Elevator relief is cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so anyhow, if you guys have any questions, too, uh, feel free to ask them anytime you want. Yeah. Like even now. Now this so. whole system here, like There's we literally right started putting it together two days ago here, right? Here. No, it was... Uh, really yeah. last night, actually. Last night, really, yeah. yeah. More, more about yeah. maybe 3 o'clock in the morning or so. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. <laughs> yeah, no, not, not except yet. for the As ITU. Well, mm. technically, we're not an internet service provider, and we're not providing actual pay for service or so we don't have services. to live up to any obligations of anybody as we're classified as a hobbyist service so being as a we're just playing around we're technically in the free and clear for the moment and interesting enough we have caught uh, on we used to have a lot of different conference numbers like you know we set it up insanely kind of ridiculous but like people <laughs> who are interested in electronics go to this one room and then we realize you know we're, if you're interested in linux go to this one room and it was kind of stupid so we kind of put it back to just a couple of general doc conferences mm-hmm. and we noticed one day that uh some people were on the conference uh what were they doing there good <laughs> uh, or do we something, even something about western union credit card numbers yeah some and we quickly took care of that yeah. but um so basically we didn't drop their docs we didn't reveal no. them to the feds we didn't do anything stupid like that what we did we simply but, just banned them from our system but the point is like the voicemail thing actually we don't off. know what most of it's used for and mm-hmm. you know some of the criticisms that i've heard is like you know well, what if drug dealers are using it? I'm kind of like, yeah, and so. Or citizens <laughs> too, they don't, they don't get free service. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Drug deal, dealers need a voicemail as well. Yeah, well. Actually, I guess what we're saying essentially dealers is that voicemail too. We, we can get in trouble for anything these days. I mean, there's really no way to follow all 7.5 million laws across the states and the feds and all that. I'm not really sure if that's humanly possible. I'm sure you could look it up if you spent the rest of your life doing just that or something like that. But uh, um, we, we're not breaking the law, man. We're we're offering a service. It's, really it's free. Really. However you <laughs> use it is your business. So. Yeah, yeah we're not interested but, in, in. I wasn't saying that you were breaking the law, but I was saying that if, hey, let's say you did an investigation and they had them to your service, you know, could they just come and say we want all the voicemail? We don't have any logs of any of that, so. Yeah. We don't, and they could do that. Because they can do whatever they want. <laughs> yeah. Now, Telefreak itself does not actually log any call detail reports. We do not actually the parse our own CDR records voicemail. on the conference or yeah, on, the, we don't on the public to, PBX. <laughs> Basically, what you can do is you can essentially uh, ban the caller ID number or name of any given person through the blacklist function in Asterisk. And keep in mind, these guys are complete tools. Oh yeah, yeah, like so. I, I that's one guy, one guy, thing one guy was practicing his rap on the bridge one day. Oh yeah, he was doing that. Yeah. He was rapping on the bridge. We listened to it for a little while. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> he was terrible. Yeah. yeah. Could somebody who has an asterisk server on their yeah. side falsify their call their ID? Yes, and that sure, has right. been a trouble of ours in the past. But uh, through network means, for instance, IP tables, we can literally just drop their IP address. So at that point, you just have to re-up your IP address. And for most people, that's more of a pain in the butt to reset your cable modem than to... They get, they get bored and move along. So It yeah. also yeah. takes a little bit of diligence just to uh, keep also, moderating the conferences. Because then when they come back once or twice and there's still someone kicking them out, then they're like... Mm-hmm. And then they, they yeah. run out of also, resources. Also, we up. found ways of annoying people who annoy us, too. So, uh, Very easily. Uh, oh, you should tell them about the... Um, uh, the different ways that we can transfer people. Yeah, uh, we, we have a number of different uh, extensions, so we call them, that we can 
toss people if we don't like them, for instance. The Tool, uh, 42 and 6. Uh, 46 and 2. 46 and 2. Nah, just a stupid song of mine. I have an old RIAA recording of basically somebody prank calling the RIAA. Uh, banana now, phone. There's the a one banana phone. Ravi's banana phone. Of course. Now, the one that I always wanted to do was get, like, me, you, and Slee stack on there and just record a conversation with us <laughs> so that whenever we transfer them off the conference, they yeah. still think they're on the conference. So if somebody's, and like, sitting there toning there the bothers. conference for, like, a few hours straight. We did that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. We actually didn't do a recording, but it was just like the conference, and it back, basically based on caller ID. Right. And basically the idea is that they'll think they're still toning the conference when in actuality they're like, ah, I'm getting those in, guys. In reality, they're Actually, just talking they're, to themselves. They're toning a black yeah. room full of nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Huh? Yeah. Well, we, well, we mute no, people all the time. But, um, yeah, muting works well. Oh, yeah, don't know. Actually, yeah, yeah muting yeah, yeah. tends to be more of a first-time offense. Like, if you're just, like, echoing, for instance, a lot of people call in through uh, VoIP phones for the first time through their computers, and they'll just automatically, like, just have a speakerphone and a pair of... Uh, and a pair of speakers just set up, and oftentimes they just create a nice echo, echo. on the conference. Echo. Yeah, there's lots of ways that you can get on the system, either via DID or direct by IP address, yeah. via IAX or SIP. And so a lot of people are experimenting with it. They're like, ooh, voice over IP, and they Google, and eventually mm -hmm. they'll find Telefreak. And so we get them on there a lot of times, and so they get like me and Gid going, shut the fuck up, dude. Don't you know how to do VoIP? Like, yeah, but uh, for the most part, it's fairly straightforward to uh, to connect to the bridge, literally just through what's called a DID or a direct inward dial. Uh, it's essentially just a regular telephone number that connects directly to the box. Another way is through the gateway, which is essentially a third ser or third party service provider, whom we then uh, have like an extra extension or number on off of their box. Another way is internationally. Uh, once again, through DIDs or gateways, and the fourth and final way is through directly into the box over VoIP itself. Uh, we currently support both SIP and IAX clients, and uh, yeah, it's it's pretty nifty. Anyway, well, the uh, go on. So we have a local server here that we're doing stuff, and we plan to set up some games and stuff like that. And we have a server hosted externally because. We weren't 100% sure how, on how well the bandwidth was going to work here. But and we knew it would be shitty. I mean. Actually, it's been <laughs> working amazingly. It's been working great. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know how much throughput you're getting out of it. But oh, you mean on your box? No, on oh, the box. Oh, that's crap. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> but, um, so, we're, uh, so we have a, an external box so we can have people around the world dial into and you know, either talk in the conference, either talk to people on the phones downstairs. We've set it up so that... Uh, um, people can around the world dial in and just ring our phones and people kind of get confused and pick it up and then they're talking to some jerk in Australia or New Zealand or something like that. So, um, you mean Ken? Ken Page. Yes, I do mean yeah. Ken. Um, <laughs> He's the permanent <laughs> resident of the conference. Um, and that's pretty much how it works uh, between the setup. And we're adding in more features. We're a little bit behind and very, very tired. Um, uh, but Coffee and beer. Yeah, has been pretty much our diet for. Well, they can they can bring it. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Funnest thing for me so far is the uh, the ATAs that we're using actually allow us to use uh, pulse dial telephones uh, without any extra stuff going on. They do um, the they convert the pulse to the DTMF. Needed yeah. Or did you ever figure out how to do star and pound? No. Does anybody know how to uh, use a, a pulse dial phone dial phone to uh, dial star or pound? Anybody know? I thought it or was can like it be done? or 1-1 one one real quick. But it's 1-1. One one. Is it 1-1? One one? I, I, I tried that. Yeah, I'm going to try it again. I, it's totally possible, yeah. Right, right. Oh, did you try to just do 9 and then try to dial a phone number after you dialed 9? Right. Um, what was one? Um, no, oh, actually, the, one, one is the uh, call um, something, something, something interesting. interesting. Yeah. 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 No, actually, here and there uh, throughout the day today, uh, we've been kind of troubleshooting things and kind of, you know, you might have picked up a phone that was being worked on or, you know. Yeah, I was redoing all those cables. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, actually, a lot of the Ethernet cables we had to work with weren't very cool. So yeah. we've Made replaced them. Once yeah. again, like, we only started 
really putting together the IVR yesterday. So yeah, it's most nice. most everything that you're seeing on there is the result of the last 24 hours of. Well, it's on the fly and for what we need. I mean, we're building yeah. the features for what people are asking for. Yeah, what it's, we've been it's entirely cool the result here. of our last minute procrastinations. Well, if you guys if you guys have any of your own phones too, feel free to come up and uh, we got a couple extra ATAs and we'll even unplug something that's already there and uh, you can try it out and mess around and stuff. Um, or if you have a feature set or anything like that, uh, you know, go ahead. Uh, if you make an international call from here, do they get charged for... Nothing. Okay. No, it's, it's all free. Only, oh. yeah, the, they would only be charged for if their service provider would charge them for an inbound call. Okay. Basically, we're, we're not collecting any rates on these, and we're actually paying out of pocket for, uh, for this service. Actually, be approximately how much money have we spent today? <laughs> Um, today, uh, I looked at it, we have spent, uh, I think it's about $6.50. <laughs> you guys need to make more calls. So, <laughs> yeah, so we need a lot more calls. A couple hundred bucks or something? Like that? Yeah, yeah. No. So come on, guys. <laughs> call. <laughs> Someone international, go call them. Yeah. yeah. How do you fund this? Because I'm guessing it's at some point it might get expensive either. Like With our cheap American dollar? <laughs> 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 no doubt. It's no, like, literally, like, the bandwidth is graciously donated from Beef and his work. Oh, and actually wrote it too. And wrote it. And yeah, the uh, box for Telefreak, we got that from uh, from a co-location in Dallas, and that's through Teal Networks. Yeah. Now, the DIDs are actually oftentimes free for us as inbound providers, as uh, CLEX tend to make money off of long-distance charges to those DIDs. So we actually don't pay a cent for it. In exchange, your regular phone company is already making the rates just through normal service. Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna pull up some inbound tomorrow, big time. For sure. No. And they just yeah. offer just a, a DID that goes via SIP or IAX to wherever you point it. So mm -hmm. we point it to the Telefree Gastrix box. And literally, all that that does, it just takes a regular phone number and sends it into a VoIP protocol, and we just pick it up wherever we have our Astros box hosted. And we're also using SIP. For which gives us uh, a lot of international inbound, like all over the world. If you're sitting in Argentina, mm -hmm. you can dial in and whatnot. As a local. Yeah. So what did you say you guys did that uh, was advantageous for them to get their DID? Uh, we signed up for their service. Terminate their calls. <laughs> no, the company, the companies, they make money off the yeah. inbound termination, either via tariffs or, or via long distance termination. So we get the DID for free inbound. Yeah, um, for so instance, we don't make any outbound uh, calls with it, and so the CLEC that offers the DID, they make like chump change off of it mm -hmm. by giving us free inbound. So if I wanted to just say pick up the phone number? You could pick up one DID and point it to wherever you wanted via SIP or IAX and do just that. Yeah, you can literally get a free VoIP telephone number just by signing up for free a inbound. service like... Uh, what, what uh, One of them actually, is called IP you, call. If you IP take a call, look, SIP yeah. broker, uh, IX tell. If you take a look at the web page that I have displayed right now, it's our DID access page. And on that page, we actually say who our provider for each one of these DIDs is. Uh, SIP number is just one that I recently found. There's Stanophone, there's IP call. So, I mean. I don't think Stanophone's accepting new. Stanophone, inbound. Stanophone, Actually, we just got a Stanophone number tonight. Cut them oh, did they set it back up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the one we, don't, we have. Uh, we have a telephone number specifically for the conference so that it makes the, ring, the phones ring. Give it out to your friend. Say, hey, I'm standing next to the phone. Boom. Or whatever. Give it to a pizza delivery guy. Put on the street. Yeah, maybe get yeah, some interesting it's calls. It's nice for anonymizing yourself, for instance. You know, if, yeah, not, if you don't want to give out your cell phone number to okay hope attendees, it's probably a good idea to just forward it all through your asterisk box through one of these free DIDs. Mm -hmm. oh, just right. to jump in for a second, since you all know how we uh, can abuse our callers and all of our problems we've been having, we've kind of jumped over one of the most important aspects of the actual project, and that is the conference itself. And in essence, it really brings back the old school freak community. And a perfect example of that is in China when the Great Firewall went up. We had callers coming from all over China calling into the conference and talking to us about things that were not being reported in the you know major media outlets. We were the first to know, you know, because people found their way around the firewall to mm -hmm. call our conference, you know, yeah, beating I, their I own system. And that, in essence, is really what Project Telefreak is about. Is I, that 
I think that Telefreak kind of embodies a libertarian idea of being able to have free speech no matter where you are in the world. So despite being in America, being in a foreign country, so long as you have internet access or telephone access, you can share your opinion or hear the opinion.